If you could buy a two-out hit, kind of like you buy a vowel in Wheel of Fortune, how much would a two-out hit cost? I'm asking for a friend. Hey everybody, I'm Tara Wellman and this is Bird Seeds. Well, the Cardinals could not complete the sweep of the Pirates at Bush after Lance Lynn was roughed up in the series finale and the Bats, well, they couldn't buy a two out hit. But you know, the Pirates came into St. Louis five games back and left six back. So I'll take it. You know, it's tough to see Lance have a bad night, but honestly, how many bad nights have we had to suffer through at the hands of Cardinals pitching this year? Not many. You know, I find myself wondering how much better this rotation could have been with Adam Wainwright leading it. I mean, they've been the best rotation in baseball almost all year, but Wayno has to make the team better somehow, right? For you war people out there, Wayno was worth almost five wins above replacement level pitcher last season. Now this year, the replacement has been anyone from Tyler Lyons to Jaime Garcia, and they've done just fine. Try it. Try to figure out who doesn't pitch this year if Adam Wainwright is healthy. Do it. I dare ya. But I'll warn you, it will make you crazy. That's a pretty good problem to have. Kind of crazy to think about that, but in the absence of Wainwright, you expect someone to step up and take over that staff ace kind of role. So who has it been this season? I've asked people this question all week and I've had some very interesting conversations with many of you about this, but I wanted to share what some of you have said. Simply, Jaime, when healthy, always that caveat. Lackey, he's reminding me so much of 2011 Carp. Wow, big words. I think Lance Lynn is the best pitcher in the rotation, but I think Carlos Martinez has pitched the best. Interesting distinction, but I see where you're going with that. I also had a lot of simple one word, Waka Martinez, primarily for those two guys. A few more Lynn, a few more Lackey, but ultimately what I discovered is every single one of these guys in the rotation, someone thinks they're the ace. So the real question is, how do you define an ace? For me, Garcia is out of the equation because he just hasn't pitched enough. Your ace is a guy that you can depend on, and right now, he's not really that guy. But what stat or what number or what characteristic means the most in determining who is that ace? Baseball being the numbers game that it is, there are so many things that you can use to argue your point as to whomever it is that you think is the staff ace this season. But let's break it down a little bit. What is the most important for that number one guy? Is it innings pitched? Well, that would be John Lackey. Is it ERA? Remember, I'm excluding Jaime Garcia simply for lack of appearances, and that makes it Carlos Martinez. What about Whip? That's Waka. Fip? That's Lynn. All four guys leading in a pretty relevant statistic. What about K per nine? War? Quality starts? Please don't even get me started on pitcher's wins. That is not a stat that I'm going to use to argue for anything in this conversation. There are so many pieces that you can put in this puzzle and plug into the equation to make your point for any one of these five guys. With all those numbers to dig through, here is one interesting angle. Shout out to the JJ Bailey on Twitter for bringing it to my attention. Check out the left on base percentage for each one of these guys. At the top of the list is Carlos Martinez with an 83.7% strand rate. That's followed immediately by Lance Lynn and Michael Waka actually rounds out the group at the bottom. Now, this is fascinating to me because of all the concerns about Carlos Martinez coming into this season. His mentality, his ability to handle the pressure of a starting role. That strand rate is up from 73% last year to 83% this year. Now, certainly there are other factors that go into this. Defense, quality of opponent, sometimes you just get lucky and the Cardinals seem to get lucky a lot this year, but any way you slice it, Carlos Martinez has been phenomenal this year. Not only more than expected, but more than you really could have asked for the guy. And in the absence of your ace, he's come in and proven that when he's in the game, you got a good shot of coming away with a victory. 
The fact is there's no simple answer here. I guess rather than closer by committee, it's almost become ace by committee. <laughs> Think about it this way. Should the Cardinals actually make the postseason, knock on wood, which of these starting five doesn't pitch in the rotation in the playoffs? Which guy becomes the 2015 version of the forgotten Shelby Miller wasting away in the bullpen? How do you put any of them in the bullpen? I suppose the moral of the story is an ace is way more important in a rotation without this much depth and talent. The leadership is there and the numbers back it up wherever it may come from. You guys realize what the constant in this equation is, right? It's, it's Yadier Molina. I mean, I don't know that you can name a catcher the staff ace, but if Adam Wainwright's off the table, I'll take Yachty as a solid second choice. Listen, I think he's the best catcher in the game. Argue with me about that if you want. There are some great catchers out there that do a lot of great things, but I don't think there's anyone out there that does the job that a catcher is supposed to do better than Yadier Molina does it. He does so many things that can't necessarily be quantified in numbers or in words. There are not things that necessarily show up in a stat sheet. Yes, I know there are metrics to judge the value of a catcher just like there are metrics to judge anyone else's value, but some of those things you just can't put into a statistic. He does things like when he goes out to the mound with runners on base. We talked about that strand rate. How many times has he gone out to Carlos Martinez and had a, well, not so much a conversation as just telling him what's what. And then Carlos Martinez shuts it down. He does the same thing with Michael Waka. He does the same thing with Lance Lynn at times. You know, this is a guy that has control of the game from the first pitch on. And I don't think you can put a number value on how important that is. And then when he goes out and has a night where he, you know, hits a double, a, a triple, yeah, a triple, steals a base and throws out a runner. I mean, is there anyone more important to this team than Yadier Molina? All the conversation on Twitter and on Periscope was so much fun this week that I asked you all once again to send me your questions via Twitter and I would answer them on the show. And some of you actually did this week. So high five, internet. Okay, let's take a look at some of your Twitter questions. First question comes from Mark and he says, assume St. Louis hosts the Bucks or the Cubs in the playoffs. Who are your game one and two starters at home and does it change by opposition? Good question, and it ties nicely into what we were just talking about. For me, John Lackey has been so steady, at home especially, plus he has that postseason experience. He's got to be one of those first two starters, whether it's one or two. Jaime Garcia's home road splits seem to be a thing of the past. Knock on wood. So for me, it's either Waka or Lynn in the other game. And I think I would change it depending on the opponent, just because they've had a little more success one over the other. If it's the Pirates, I go with Waka. If it's the Cubs, I would go with Lynn. Although Nathan on Periscope this week had a great suggestion saying that Adam Wainwright should start game one of the postseason. I like where that's going to. Next question. More pivotal. Joe Kelly's standoff or rally squirrel? How could one possibly choose between two such key components in big postseason victories? I, I, man, that's a legit question. I gotta go with Rally Squirrel though, because Rally Squirrel didn't just factor into that win, but the rest of the entire. He's on the ring! I mean, he's on the ring. It's got to be Rally Squirrel. I really do love answering your questions, though. So send me your questions on Twitter. If you periscope with me, you can ask me questions there. And I might answer some of them on the fly, but I'll save the best ones for next week's show as well. So send me your questions. We can carry this conversation on into next week. Coming up next week for the Cardinals, the Marlins come to town, but without Fernandez or Stanton. And... Really, the birds need to take advantage of not having to face either of those two superstars. The Marlins are not a great team without them, and a sweep shouldn't be unreasonable. Yeah, here, Cardinals.
Then the Giants come to town and bring their version of hashtag devil magic to Bush. These guys are chasing the Dodgers in the NL West, and they also got swept by the Cubs in a four-game set last week. So they're not exactly playing their best baseball either. Now, I always have these horrible flashbacks of postseason baseball when the Giants come to town or when the Cardinals play the Giants ever, but fingers crossed, that's all done and over with. So last year, and the Cardinals will be able to take care of business against San Francisco as well. We'll talk about all of that, break it all down, look at all the tweets and Periscope questions next week on Bird Seeds.